Good afternoon. Thanks for coming. Many thanks to the team of Republica. Thank you very much for your invitation. It's great to be back in Berlin. My name is Mark Renegadea. I am the founder and CEO of Hoppala Stuttgart. Hoppala is a systems integration services provider with a focus on the integration of contents into mobile augmented reality space. I am also CEO Quality Assurance at Layer Amsterdam. Layer is the creator and provider of the world's largest and most popular mobile augmented reality platform. Today, we want to talk about mobile augmented reality. We are at the beginning of something very new. We are right at the dawn of a new experience medium. Let me show you what it is, augmented reality, and let's dive into the magic a little bit and see how mobile augmented reality technology works. I want to share some insights from our daily work with you today and show you why augmented reality is way more than just a function. It's way more than just another feature on your handset. Augmented reality is a new means of expression. We will learn about some best practices, some of the most exciting user experiences in mobile augmented reality space that have been created on top of the layer mobile augmented reality platform already as of today. So the term augmented reality it sounds a little old fashioned, so it sounds a little corny. There are other names for that, like for example, air tagging. I mean, it's not about air tagging, it's not correct. Optic internet. So it doesn't have to do with glass fiber or something. It's not optic internet, no. Synthetic environment, well, that's a military term. You probably don't want to go with that one. They're all not what it is. It's about augmenting the reality. It's about augments. It's about overlaying video stream with digital information. Everybody knows what it is or at least think they know what it is. Everybody, everybody played computer games. Practically every computer game ever designed has got some kind of augment in it. Yeah, some kind of augment. I mean, look at this. Look at all the extra items that clutter the whole screen. They're augments. Augmented reality, it's a tag. It's already out there. It's already been out there for decades since it was first invented in the early 90s when Tom Cordell and David Mazel coined the term augmented reality, they applied it to a hat-mounted digital display that guided workers through assembling electrical wires at aircrafts at Boeing. This term has a long history. We have good reasons to stick with it. Augmented reality is so great because of three things. It combines the real and virtual. It's interactive and real time. And it's 3D. It looks great. It looks magic. It looks magical. It just happens. It's there, it looks real, except it's augmented. It isn't too geeky, it doesn't repel people, it's so easy. You want to learn more about that historic site? Well, just point at it with your handset and the information is right on your screen. There is no button pushing, not a big learning curve. Children understand it, older people understand it, men and women understand it. It's the most exciting thing happening in the contemporary tech scene. 2010, 
Almost 20 years later, augmented reality is finally going mobile. The latest evolution of mobile devices allows us to finally apply augmented reality technology to mobile handsets. We needed just a few ingredients. We needed a camera and a screen, the location and direction, and we need information. Let me show you how mobile augmented reality looks like on your handset using Layer. Layer is a browser. It's the augmented reality browser for iPhone and Android phones, and it's free. The magic is all about location and direction. We need to track the user's location and direction. First, location. The system learns about the user's location using GPS. That's what like navigation systems for cars have been doing for a while. Now we can also do this on the mobile phone. Additionally, this might even include Wi-Fi location services or cell tower triangulation. Second, direction. The system needs to know in which direction the user is actually pointing the device. This has considerable impact on the overlaid information. We know about the direction because modern devices integrate a compass. This sort of tracking of location and direction is called markerless. Tracking. AR is a large field. We at Layer have our own approach to foster usage of mobile AR. We created the Layer Open Platform. No matter if you think about brand awareness or if you're a content provider, if you're a developer or a user, everybody can create its own augmented reality experiences on top of layer. The result, over 2,800 developers from more than 70 countries registered a layer. There are more than 500 layers online already and more than 1,800 in development. As opposed to using GPS and Compass, there is another way to help your device with orientation. It's markers. This is a simple marker. This is another one. And this is a more complex marker, a so-called QR code, which is basically a two-dimensional barcode. These can even carry information that can be read by a QR code reader. This one can also serve as a marker. It's just a street sign, but as long as we teach our systems to identify it, it can easily serve as a marker. There are interesting use cases for marker-based tracking. Let me show you marker-based tracking in action on a mobile device using technology by Total Immersion. This was demoed by Intel at the CES show Las Vegas. Wouldn't it be cool if I could have a mobile device, something like this, that would allow me to do something like this? Wow, that's ah, pretty cool. How'd you do that? Let me go ahead and point this guy up. And there. Now, I'm using an actual technology from uh, Total Immersion, and what I'm seeing here is I can actually get a full information download from the restaurant as well as look at video and uh, see some of the great pictures. Every technology has its pros and cons. Markerless tracking, on the one hand, works almost everywhere. I mean, GPS and Compass just work everywhere. Marker-based tracking obviously does not work everywhere simply because there aren't markers everywhere. 
marker-based tracking, uh, markerless tracking, on the other hand, only works outside. This is simply because the devices need view contact to the GPS satellites. Marker-based tracking can easily be used indoors. Depending on the actual use case, either one will be the technology of choice. So there's still a lot to do in mobile AR. We will almost certainly see the different technologies emerge. We will see image recognition capabilities being integrated. Together with existing tracking technologies, image recognition will allow a much more precise location and direction tracking. It will actually allow us to stick the overlay to the reality view and therefore heavily improve the accuracy of the overlay. And probably we may also see first steps into standardization of communication protocols. I'd like to share two important insights with you that result from our daily work. Insight number one, Android's taking over. These bars show the number of first launches of layer on iPhone and Android devices in relation to each other. In the second last week, you can very clearly see the impact of our newly launched iPhone app, but only a week later, Android is already taking over again. I do love my iPhone, so don't get me wrong on this, but concluding from our experiences, this is my statement, Android's taking over. Number two, AR is a new means of expression. It's more than just a function. It's way more than just a feature. A new means as opposed to the classical map. And this includes digital maps as well, of course. So AR is about the experience, the immersive experience. It's about interaction, 3D, and multimedia. Maps serve a different use case. Maps are all about awareness, like 360 degree awareness, and they're about orientation. Today, I brought seven best practices to show you some of the most exciting user experiences in mobile augmented reality space that have been created on top of the layer open platform. See the things that you can't see. This is a 3D model of the future Rotterdam Market Hall. This building does not yet exist. If you go there, you will only find a huge construction site. But simply hold up your handset and you can experience how this market hall will look like at this specific location at some point in the future. You can walk around it, you can even walk through it and experience future already today. Number two, thinking of entertainment. This is a Beatles tour with a couple dozen points of interest in London and Liverpool, several videos and audio. Along the route, there are many 3D objects, including like a yellow submarine or a model of the Beatles crossing every road. You can even pose with a band for pictures. Number three, the virtual public art project. Let me quote the artist Chris Manzioni. He said, key element of our layer is that the objects are site specific. This is different than most other digital media that can easily be transferred and shared. This requires the user's presence and interaction with a site itself. Quotation end. It is exactly what AR is about, putting information into its location context. Number four gaming. 
Mobile AR is great for games. For example, like scavenger hunt, or something like that. For the t first time, a major game developer like Ubisoft used Layer, by the way, to launch a new title called Splinter Cell. Number five. Hoppala was one of the first 50 developers worldwide granted access to the Layer open platform even before it went public. During this beta developers program, we created Stuttgart region clusters. Stuttgart region clusters visualizes various industry clusters through mobile AR. It's a great tool used for regional marketing purpose, and it was developed in close cooperation with the Stuttgart Region Economic Development Corporation. Number six, social. Hopalago's Easter is the worldwide Easter greeting service built for Layer. It lets you place 3D Easter eggs around the world and leave messages for your friends. It leverages the capabilities of this new medium. It combines the real and the virtual. Because it lets you place eggs at your friend's place, it's just that they're augments. It's interactive and real-time. You can place the eggs right from your phone, right where you are, and they're instantly there. And it's 3D. I mean, you can just easily walk around these beautifully designed eggs and enjoy mobile augmented reality in 3D. Talking about location context, I mean, we're in Berlin. I've been coming here regularly since the early 90s. This is such a historical place. I mean, there are so many stories to tell. There are so many people to learn about, so many interesting places. In Berlin, history is everywhere. That's why I love this place. And that's why I'm very happy to announce today's launch of a great new mobile AR experience the Berlin Wall. It was created by Hoppala and our partner Superimposed from Düsseldorf. You can follow the former borderline from Brandenburg Gate and experience German history at an historic site. The exclusively designed 3D wall even includes several watchtowers that were located on the eastern side of the wall in order to observe the former border strip. So, where you go out later today or tomorrow, use your handset, use layer to follow the Berlin Wall and enjoy this extraordinary augmented 3D experience. There are some other screenshots for that, and even this one. Enjoy. Thank you very much.